Okay, who hit the rain? <laughs> so here we were thinking it was going to rain, it was going to pour, and the rain never came. But no worries, we have the perfect solution for this crazy rain that seemed to have disappeared. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Let us get started with our usual welcomes. Good morning, this is Coffee and Headlines, our morning get-together here on Facebook Live and subsequently on YouTube. Hello, YouTubers. We missed you for a few days. But we're here to look at headlines and comments from local newspapers from state and um, from uh, nation uh, sources of information, national sources of information, just to figure out what to do, how to keep ourselves happy, entertained, and amused living in Puerto Vallarta as a community of English-speaking locals. My name is Paco, and I sound like I'm out of breath because literally 30 seconds before we started, I was still stirring my coffee to get ready and have a nice cup to share with you. No iced coffee today. It's nice and warm coffee because I figured it was going to be chilly this morning after all the rain, but it never rained, but I'm whining and I'm going to stop whining. First, let me remind you that if you are new to these broadcasts, let us know that you are new by writing the, the word new in your comments. And we will give you a proper welcome. If you have something truly important to say, uh, add the letter Q to the beginning of your comment, and we will definitely try to get to it during the broadcast. And now let us get started with our news, which include vaccination information, bad news for former um, Nayarit governor, uh, Sandoval, who's, oh dear, he's getting into deeper doo-doo now. Uh, we have news about seaweed. We have news about streets that are not finished. We have news about water and rain or lack of thereof. So we might as well get started and uh, let's cue the headlines. And they are gone, ladies and gentlemen. Almost 14,000 doses of the AstraZeneca COVID-19 vaccine were returned to Guadalajara after large numbers of folks in their 40s failed to show up for vaccination. Either that or the government completely overestimated the number of vaccines to be needed for the age group. Presently, there is no further information about a second vaccine dose for folks in their 50s or about the next vaccination campaign for folks in their 30s. Uh, but, of course, we'll keep you posted as soon as we learn something new. <clears throat> Excuse me. Former Nayarit Governor Roberto Sandoval, already in jail for ties to organized crime and embezzlement, is now in deeper doo-doo. Thanks to new charges that have appeared against him related to electoral fraud, apparently in audio recorded conversations uh, that go back to 2017, Sandoval appears to attempt to use social food programs in exchange for votes. Um, not looking good, 
and um, you know, it, I can tell you, we live in a different time. There were periods in Mexican history where governors and, and politicians and authorities could get away with these kinds of things now more and more. All these plots are coming to light, so maybe we are becoming a better country after all, or at least in some respects. Um, look at that photograph. This could be somebody's consomme or refried beans. We will never publish photos like that here in, in, in coffee and headlines. Uh, but it, we, it is what they gave us. It, this is what was published. And what you're looking at is large amounts of sargassum seaweed that has shown up in the beach, on the beach rather, at Rincón de Guayabito, some 90 minutes north of Puerto Vallarta. And this is concerning locals because they feel it will botch vacation plans for many. The seaweed on its own is not dangerous to humans or not very dangerous to humans, but some of the creatures living in the seaweed, such as jellyfish, can be poisonous. Since 19, uh, rather since 2014, sargassum has become an increasingly inconvenient problem in Caribbean beaches. And when it comes to our beaches, we certainly do not want to see it here in Puerto Vallarta, but who can argue with Mother Nature? Not me. Especially when she's inconsistent in delivering rain. And I will stop whining. Maybe. <laughs> um, moving on. By the book, according to this news note, all current street pavement projects must be finished by October 1st when the new administration takes over. But apparently this may not be the case. There are three very important pavement projects underway in Puerto Vallarta at present time. And I'll show them to you in a map so that you can get a sense as to why they are so important. First of all, there's Montessori Street, which shows presently shows a 50% progress. Uh, then there's Avenida Las Flores, connecting uh, the International Convention Center to Francisco Medina Asensio. But this project has barely just begun. And two days ago, I showed you this photograph of um, the third one, Emiliano Zapata in downtown Pitillal, which shows a 40% progress, and it is um, scheduled to be concluded by July 29th. So will these streets get actually done in time? We can certainly hope, but just to give you some context as to where these streets are, let me just show you. Uh, first of all, we have Maria Montessori here, and it is connecting um there's medina asensio oh my god i have to turn this on for you to see what i'm pointing at hello there's medina asensio there's a, a maritime terminal and here's the hospital that changes names um and there's maria montessori right next to the hospital that changes names um and it goes all the way to connect here um and this street has been worked on. We've talked about it before. We've seen photographs of it. And it is very important because if, let's say, that you're coming this way and you need to get to this point, the only choice is to come all the way over here. But having this other through way will make things a lot smoother, or at least somewhat smoother. Then here's downtown Pitillal. Um, and there is, where is it? There's Emiliano Zapata Street, not to be confused with Emiliano Zapata neighborhood that we know and love. And it is, as I mentioned the other day, it's the main throughway of Pitillal. And it is because it's a wider street, they can actually use, um, they, they're able to, to, uh, to install wider sidewalks on it. And I saw a little bit of this and it is quite wonderful. And the third street project mentioned is over here. Um, let me find it. Ah, here we go. Okay. So we are north of Marina Vallarta. We passed the shopping, so forth and so on. And there's that Carl's Jr. in a gas station right here. Well, that street is Villa Las Flores, and it is not presently paved. And if you follow it, it goes all the way to the convention center. So this one is a very important street. This is the one that has been barely, barely touched. But all three street projects are extremely important to, um, to alleviate traffic in our city. Let us hope that they're able to conclude them. Um, and uh, moving right along, I want to show you this other photograph. Um, 
While it's comforting to see local rivers carry a stream after the recent rain, uh, region reservoirs and dams have barely shown improvement as far as the amount of water they are presently storing. The drought continues to be a major problem. And now meteorologist Victor Manuel Cornejo, we don't know who he is, but he claims that there's a lot of false information on social media about upcoming rain, including, get this, the reports we've been trusting from the National Hurricane Warning Centers. So who are we to trust then when it comes to <clears throat> when it's going to rain and how much? Well, we have been expecting heavy rain today and tomorrow, and we even published it, and um, we don't know what's going on. But let us just get started by looking at the weather, and we'll take it from there, and then we'll talk a little bit more about what's been happening or not happening with the rain, and I will teach you a shamelessly vulgar expression that is perfect for this situation. But first, let's take a look at the weather forecast. Integration test email number one. This template is used by integration tests only. Okay. Well, we don't know what that is about. Maybe you do. I am not entirely sure. Uh, but what I can tell you is that according to Carrot Weather, it is 26 degrees right now. Uh, feels like 29 degrees. Humidity is at 93%. That's way high. And our temperature in Fahrenheit degrees is 78. There is a 15% chance of rain right now. I'll believe it when I see it. And of course, our forecast calls for heavy rain heavy rain. I tell you, where is it? Heavy rain until morning starting again in the evening with a high temperature of 29, low temperature of 24. Tomorrow, Saturday, we will have heavy rain <clears throat> until morning. Uh, so it'll rain overnight tonight. And it starts to rain again tomorrow evening with a high temperature of 30, low temperature of 24. Sunday will be a humid day and mostly cloudy with a high temperature of 30 low temperature of 24. I will believe all these rains when I see them. You see, there was this article published yesterday. Let me show it to you. Um, this article indicated that we would receive heavy rain and even hailstorms in the coming hours, they said. But where did they go? We published an update yesterday afternoon saying that rain was coming, but there was no rain in Puerto Vallarta, at least not in my neighborhood. So with that information we can trust, we can we are at least going to uncover yet another vulgar expression for you to amaze your Spanish instructor or Spanish-speaking friends. But please, please save this one for your closest friends as it is quite vulgar, and I sure hope my sister is not watching because she's going to get on my case for teaching you this very, very vulgar expression. Uh, in English, I think there is such a thing as crying wolf when you make a big deal out of something and then nothing happens. I think in English, um, there's also um, much ado about nothing when you make a big deal about something and then it turns out to not be the case. In Spanish, I am sure we have a very civilized expression, but it escapes me. The one that comes to mind is one that I enjoy very much, and I am not feeling shame for admitting it. So without further ado, I introduce you to a new phrase. Boom! Ah, this is tanto pedo para tan poca caca. There you go. I'm going to say it again, and then I'm going to translate it. Tanto pedo para tan poca caca. And it literally means all that farting for such amount of poop. Yes, you heard right. This is the expression that we use for whenever somebody makes an exaggerated statement or prediction or something and then it doesn't happen. Oh, all you have to do and then use, use this kind of cynical eye rolling expression on your face and you go, mm, tanto pedo para tan poca caca. And you just stay there frozen. I am sure, I am sure you're going to blow the mind of your Spanish instructor if you use this phrase. Tanto pedo para tan poca caca. There is a variation. Tanto pedo para cagar aguado. <laughs> which is even worse. And that means all that farting for such a soft stool. 
<laughs> oh, my father would have a cow if he heard me saying this. Um, and David, thank you, David. There's another variation. Tanto pedo pa cacahuada. Absolutely. It is very, very vulgar. Um, uh, thank you very much, Jorge. I knew that, that you would be tickled by this phrase. Um, but, you know, it's, it, it is, you know. It is. Tanto pedo para tan poca caca. I am hoping I am ruffling the weather, the feathers of Mother Nature because, you know, girl, you promised us some rain. We, you, you promised us some hailstorm. Make it so. We need a little bit of refreshing um, weather here because it's been really, really hot. Uh, let's see. I have too much, two more things to share with you before we switch over to chatty mode. The first one. Um, a few days ago, we mentioned <laughs> tanto pedo para tan poca caca. I can't believe I get away with this and you let me. Thank you very much. Anyhow, a few days ago, we mentioned an upcoming pride celebration organized by the community in Colonia Versalles. The event has now been published on Facebook. And of course, I'm going to share it with you in the show notes. And it is scheduled to take place a week from tomorrow on Saturday, June 26th, from 6 p.m. to midnight. It is billed as a cultural celebration in which you will be able to discover how art, culture, dining, family, and friendship come together for a day or rather an evening full of love. The event will be headquartered at La Gallega, a popular tapas bar in the neighborhood, and will take place on the street. It will be a street party and entrance is going to be free. So it is going to be... Uh, it's going to be fun. I am definitely going to be there. I want to support the neighborhood. And, you know, there's a lot of uh, of little places that you can hang out, you know, even if you don't want to be at the party party. You know, it's a perfect excuse to check out some of the nearby restaurants and eateries and hang out places. Uh, so we wish much success to this new endeavor. And finally, um, in case you didn't notice, uh, she is back, Diana Ross, at 77. And after 15 years away from the recording studio, uh, Diana Ross is back with a new single for her upcoming new album. The song is called Thank You, and I'll leave you with a link to the music video for you to enjoy. Is she still as supreme as we love her? Well, let's listen to the song and let's talk about it tomorrow. And with that said, let us get done with our news and switch over to chatty mode just to see what you guys are up to and how you guys are reacting to all this nonsense. Uh, hello from Mazatlan. Brett. Brett communicated with me yesterday with some more tips about the Chepe, uh, the Copper Canyon train, and I am so very happy to receive them because it's, it's all part of the information I'm putting together for when I get around to doing that trip so that I can report it properly. Uh, lots of good mornings. That's always, it is a pleasure to read your good mornings. Um, some of you are enjoying slightly cooler weather. I am very happy for you. I'm still waiting for our rain. Um, <clears throat> but I'm, I'll stop talking about it. I promise. Um, let's see what else we have here. Uh, lots of good mornings. Thank you very much, you guys. Um, Jorge says that was cute. Thank you very much because I'm reading the comments out of order or out of context. I don't know what was cute, but whatever you thought was cute, I'm very glad that you did. Um, let's see. Good. Good morning from Chicago. Hello, Ramona. Uh, Dave Schwartz says it's going to be close to 100 up in Central Marine. Ouch. Um, Matthew says hopefully they'll find 14,000 tapatios for those vaccines. I'm sure they won't go to waste. I'm sure they won't go to waste. And of course, you know, somebody went as far as to say that maybe they would advance vaccination for folks in their 50s. That didn't happen. But, um, you know, we'll have to wait and see. Matthew also contributes that Sargasso is very smelly. This is true. Um... Let's see. <laughs> Otters love it, though. I love it. I would love to be an otter. I love watching. I love watching otters. Uh, they're supposed to start remaking my street this week. It's going to be a mud bath. So glad I'm not going to be there for this. Okay. 
let's see. Oh, Karen received her second vaccine. Bravo. Every time you give me vaccine news, I get really happy. That makes us all being closer to to a better place, I suppose. Um, oh, good. I uh, Dale connected with me. Thank you very much, Dale. Dale connected with me yesterday. She went uh, exploring the recommendations from last week's tour. She showed me a beautiful photo. Uh, she was sitting literally on the same spot where I was sitting when I enjoyed Chef Cali's wonderful food at Mercado uh, Aramara. And then she went to the coffee shop that serves iced ginger coffee. That is fantastic. Again, you make my day every time you report that um, that you've checked something out that we've mentioned here. Um, let's see what else we have. Oh, your reactions to my beautiful, colorful metaphor. Uh, uh, Heather says, it most definitely rained heavily in the mountains, judging by the feverish flow of the Rio Cuala this morning. Um, I'm sure it must have rained somewhere. It just didn't make it here. And it looked very, very ominous. Uh, oh, I love it. Here I sit, brokenhearted, try to shit, but only farted. I think I may have heard that before once, but no, no, I don't know. I'm not sure, but I love it. I'll add it to my repertoire. Thank you very much, Mushi. Um. <laughs> Rita says, I already have at least five events in my life that beg for that response. Tanto pedo para tan poca caca. It's delicious. It is a perfectly delicious expression and very, very accurate sometimes, especially when you eat um a lot of beans oh never mind let's not go there um let's see tropical storm dolores is coming up the coast um you must have read something i haven't read yet i'm not disbelieving but again i'll believe it when i read it thank you very much for the report suzanne um uh batten down the hatches they say there's a cyclone coming well they've been saying that for 24 hours um uh, so we'll we'll have to wait. We'll have to wait. Um, which coast? As Jorge Colima. Yes, that's where everything comes from. From the southern part of Mexico, all the systems start moving up. And of course, you know, we'll continue to keep track of the weather forecasts just to see um, what's happening. And we'll provide the most accurate information that we can get our hands on. Today is Friday. Uh, I don't know what you guys are up to for the weekend, but hopefully you're going to be up to something fun. Um, as I mentioned yesterday, today there's going to be a, a folkloric ballet going on at, at La Isla at 7 p.m. tonight. There is that uh, outdoor market that we've been talking about during the week that's going to take place tomorrow at the same time when it's supposed to rain a lot. Hopefully the event will not get sabotaged because we want all these vendors to have success. Um, and Sunday, Sunday is my day off and I'll continue to master a couple of crochet projects that I'm working on. And, um, and I hope you guys have a really, really awesome weekend. I think we got everything that we wanted to talk about today. So let us whip out some of our credits again. I thank you for your time and your company and your feedback. And, uh, I hope that we'll get together again soon, hopefully maybe even tomorrow. And I hope that you'll have an amazing weekend. Stay kind, stay safe, stay dry. Uh, watch out for your home appliances. Make sure you have your voltage regulators in place. And hopefully let's get together tomorrow. Take care.